You exchange your coins for prizes. Which pre Not those guys. TM24. Yes. Teach it to... Let's see. Right. Thunderbolt TM. Give to Jupiter. Who should be deleted, uh, and I will get rid of Sand Attack, because let's be honest, I'm not going to use it. One, two, and poof, Jupiter forgot Sand Attack, and machine set. Jupiter learned Thunderbolt. Hey guys, this is BandoGuy4, bringing you another episode of Let's Play Pokemon Fire Red. In the previous part, I did the Fighting Dojo, and in this part, I am going to tackle Sylphco once I get my party in the proper order that I want them in. I'm doing this post-commentary because what I recorded originally was largely incoherent because I was rambling on for nearly an hour and by the end it didn't sound very good. But I realize here that I do not want Hitmonlee in my party when I go into uh, Sylphco so I'm going to go back and enter Sylphco now. This video is going to be many parts long. I am not done with it yet, and this recording alone is 53 minutes long, and it will be split into three parts uh, at whatever point I feel it is acceptable to split it based on what I have planned to say and when I'm not saying anything vital. I have places I hope to cut it, but we'll see if that actually works out. I do actually have a list here of what I want to say because there was no way I was going to remember all of it. And I'm not going to speed it up because I've sped up Rock Tunnel already in the SSN and I'm probably going to speed up more later in the LP and cut out stuff. And despite this place being 11 floors high and 32 trainers within, I'm going to leave it all in. So, the way that I plan to go through Silphco, I do it the same every single time. I take the elevator straight to the top floor, and as I go down the floors, either by the stairs or the elevator, I fight each trainer that is immediately accessible to me. And then, once I've done that, I proceed with uh, other methods of going through, which I will mention when I get to them. But as commentating over 32 trainer battles is probably not what most people would be interested in hearing, nor do I think it would be interesting in the slightest to talk about what was going on in the game for quite that long, I have many other things to say. So, at least at the beginning, my commentary will focus on Pokemon in general. and. I'm going to start off with mentioning a few stories about how much of a nerd I am in the ways of Pokemon or otherwise. And the first story that comes to mind when I think about being a nerd of Pokemon is my senior year of high school when I wasn't quite as uh, focused on classes as I had been in the past, which wasn't a... Eh, it's debatable as to what, how big of a problem it was. But in the morning of one slow day, I pulled a notebook out of my backpack and turned to a blank page. And I set out to, over the course of the day, write down the names of all 151 original Pokemon. And the teachers were kind of used to me uh, not focused on class, but most of them didn't care because it's when you have a student that doesn't pay attention but still does well regardless of that. They don't freak out too much if you're doing something else. At least not most of the time. But that's neither here nor there. Um, but my classmates, on the other hand, they were uh, quite surprised to not see me caring what was going on in the class. And so many of them took it upon themselves to ask what I was doing in this notebook that I was scribbling in almost constantly. And upon showing them the list of Pokemon that I had thus far written down, many of them were greatly disturbed. 
because a, a character flaw of mine that uh, hindered my high school experience greatly is that I don't really let people know what I'm like often or what things I'm interested in other such things as that so if I could like, gather everyone that I knew in high school in one place and say anything to them the one thing I would say is to ask anything about me and I would answer truthfully because I highly doubt that a single one of those people knows everything that I'm interested in. I mean, I would wager that a good 95% of them thought that I was the type of person who would get home, do all my homework, study for the entire night, go to sleep, wake up, and go back to school the next day, and that is so very far from the truth. Most of them probably didn't even know that I had ever played a video game, and that's that's funny to me now because I play so many video games, but anyway, I had I did very well for the first 150 Pokemon, and I had one left to go, and I could not remember for the life of me what it was. And even when I got to lunch and was sitting with my friends, like the ones who actually knew me, uh, I pulled out the list and they started naming off Pokemon off the top of their head, and they couldn't come up with what it was either. And to this day, I can't imagine why I couldn't think of any Pokemon, because another uh, nerdy point is that I can recite the Pokerap from memory, like, perfectly off the top of my head, and I'm not going to do that. But I can, and so logically, I should have been able to go through that in my head and get all 150 Pokemon. Uh, in, in the same vein as that, I can actually also recite all the opening themes to each season of Pokemon, but that's terrifying. And it wasn't until the end of the day that, almost at the same time, we all realized, oh, I forgot Lickitung. And I suppose if you're thinking about Red, Blue, Yellow, and their remakes, it's not so strange that of all the Pokemon you'd forget to be Lickitung, because it's only available through an in-game trade, but I still find it a bit of a stain on my reputation that I wasn't able to think of like a tongue. But another uh, nerdy thing that doesn't quite relate to Pokemon is I was in an AP Literature class that same year and when we didn't have a lesson planned or it was just kind of a relaxing day, our teacher liked to have us play Cranium. And if you're familiar with Cranium, you know the different set, uh, categories that come up to advance yourself in the game. And of course, my favorite was always trivia because that's uh, I was in Scholastic Bowl. Some people might know it as Quiz Bowl uh, through all of high school. And that senior year, I was the captain of the team. And one day, when we had finished the game a little bit early, they decided that it would be fun to pit the entire class against me in only trivia questions, and at the end I had emerged victorious, and again, freaking people out that I was able to beat the entire class in trivia, which doesn't really make sense to me how I managed to do that, because it was a college level class in high school and these people were some of the brightest people I've ever known and yet somehow with all the knowledge packed into my head I was able to come out on top in the trivia competition against them and I suppose some of it would be considered useless knowledge uh, though whether useless knowledge uh, whether it was really useless knowledge is debatable because uh, while most people were freaked out, I did earn a bit of respect that day. But, uh, let's see what's going on in the game right now because I have completely forgotten. Oh yes, yeah, so I decided to use Quick Attack to take down that Golbat. I don't know why. I have no idea what's going on because, as I already said, commentating over the entire game would be 
difficult. Or at least this entire area would be difficult. And I, when playing Pokemon, I've played through them so many times that I just kind of go through the motions. Which is one of the reasons why I like LPing this game so much. Because when I'm commentating about the game itself, it forces me to focus on it and not just play through mindlessly. And I get to experience Pokemon in a way that I haven't in a while. But this is not the traditional progression of the game. Uh, when you're playing through the game in the intended order, after you get the Poke Flute and go through Pokemon Tower, you're actually intended to go down to Fuchsia City, which if I had thought about it, I would have shown the map at around the time that I was talking about that, but I did not. But it's uh, south of Vermilion City. You actually have to go west out of Celadon or east or south from Lavender Town to get down to Fuchsia City. But I usually don't do that in this game. I actually go to Silphco because the sixth Pokemon, the one that I use almost always on my team, is here. And I, I originally thought that that was the way you were actually supposed to go in the game. And in the past times, I have actually used uh, the traditional progression, but I felt for the LP, I should do it not only as I usually do, but in a way that I actually get my sixth team member before I'm more than halfway through the game. So, the Pokemon that I actually get here uh, for my team is Lapras, uh, which... If you've been paying attention to my team, you probably noticed the lack of a water type, and I was in fact waiting for Lapras. But I like it partially because it has the dual typing of being a water and ice type, so it gets the same type of attack bonuses from ice type moves, which being one of the two types that's super effective against Dragon, I like having that extra little boost for ice type moves. Because I don't use Dragon type Pokemon a lot. And there aren't a lot of damaging dragon type moves, especially in earlier generations. Which is interesting because Gyarados, uh, the lovely water flying type, uh, used to be water dragon. And I'm getting all mixed up in what I wanted to talk about. I will come back to Gyarados soon. But I don't remember why I started using Lapras uh, so much. I can't imagine really playing without it, but the first Pokemon game I had was Blue, and I saw Blastoise on the cover and thought, hey, why don't I use the Pokemon that will eventually become that? So early on I used Squirtle, and in subsequent playthroughs when I wanted to bury the starter that I chose, I would get the Magikarp from the guy at Mount Moon, who was selling one for 500 Poke Dollars, and I'd go through the arduous process of getting Gyarados, and I used that for so long. And somewhere along the line, before I started playing second generation, I decided to shift to Lapras because I know in the second generation, one of the first things I figured out was how do I get Lapras in this game because I want to use it. But back to Gyarados, uh, it's interesting because it was originally intended to be a water dragon type, and in generation 1, when it was introduced, there were no damage dealing dragon type moves aside aside from Dragon Rage, which deals 40 damage no matter what. So there was no way, because of uh, the water canceling out the ice super effective damage to deal super effective damage to Gyarados, so they changed it to the water flying type that we know it as now. Obviously that they added Dragon moves that deal damage in Generation 2, which is why they were able to get away with Kingdra being a water dragon type because they had dragon breath and I think something else that would actually deal damage to it. Uh, super effective damage, rather. But... Huh, wow, I don't remember what I was supposed to talk about. I have a list in front of me and I still run out of things to say. Um... I guess I can talk about other Pokemon games that I've played. Uh, my, f I, I won't say it's my favorite, but it's the one that I've played the most is Soul Silver. I have Heart Gold and Soul Silver, and I have Heart Gold where I have 
most of the Pokédex completed, and Soul Silver I just play around on. The second time through I didn't do anything special because my brother got Heart Gold but not Soul Silver, and so I just played through it as quickly as I could to get the legendaries that were exclusive to that game. But I did not. Excuse me. I did not. Uh, I got into legendaries and then I started over. So, uh, some of the runs that I did, my first was the poison monotype run that I did, which before that, if you had told me that poison types were worthless, I would have believed you without question. Uh, basically, I thought all poison types were useless. In that run, I figured out the Tentacruel, Weezing, Gengar, well, Gengar is more ghost, but it does have a poison typing, uh, Crobat, to a certain extent Beedrill, and the six Pokemon of that team that will come to me as I'm talking about it. Uh, they're all actually pretty good. Tentacruel has, is a great special wall and has decent special attack. Uh, Crobat is insanely fast. Gengar b can basically sweep anything so long as it doesn't have incredible special defense. Beedrill, not good so much, but it was good enough that I managed to keep it on my team for the whole game. Uh, Weezing, a great defensive wall. Uh, I wouldn't have used it on my team if not for Chugga Conroy's Crystal LP. Of course, he had the shiny one, so it was a great deal more awesome than mine. But I used it and enjoyed it regardless. And the six Pokemon I actually uh, got later in the game when I figured out that whatever the six Pokemon I had before that wasn't helping me enough. I actually got a Nidoran male, and once it got to Nido King and was using Earthquake and such, uh, there was nothing that could stand in my way. Because I had a physical attacker, a special attacker, a wall and on either side, special or physical. So I actually enjoyed that poison type run, probably second most of any of the runs that I've done. Um, so. I will sometimes uh, praise poison types probably a bit more than they than they deserve to be praised, but certainly more than most people will praise them. If you know how to use them properly, they will do wonders for you. Uh, the second run I did was using only Eevee and its evolutions, so Eevee, Jolteon, Vaporeon, Flareon, Espeon, and Umbreon, and that run is why I use Jolteon in almost every playthrough I do these days because it could basically sweep the entire game by itself which is not something I had expected initially but as it turns out it's a whole lot better than I had ever thought before and that run was pretty fun although I didn't actually end up completing the game because of a certain HM that's in Heart Gold and Soul Silver that none of them could learn so it I was unable to progress to the final area with them, and I didn't want to change out any of those Pokemon to to allow myself to get to that area. If I had, it would have been Eevee, but yeah, I, I am confident that I could have uh, completed the final battle based on the ease of which I was able to take out every other trainer at that point. Uh, another run that I didn't finish for the very same reason was a bug type run. I had Scyther and Scizor, even though they're the same family, I had both of them at any given time. I had Heracross, uh, Beedrill again, I had uh, a Fortress, and instead of the Beedrill I could have used Pinsir and that would have solved my problem of not being able to get to the final area with that team, but I really didn't feel like using Pinsir all that much. And there's another bug type that I was using, uh, unless I counted wrong, which obviously was not one of the strongest links to my team, as I can't remember what it was at the moment. I mean, I could look it up, but I have too many tabs open as this, and my editing software always worries me. Uh, my favorite run thus far was my no Pokeball run which is where you don't catch any Pokemon in Pokeballs, you only get the ones that you receive from in-game characters. And so I started off with Totodile because otherwise I wasn't going to get a water type. Uh, I got a Spearow from a guard, I got uh, the Eevee from Bill and evolved it to Jolteon, I got a Tyrogue and that's how I, 
uh, ended up liking Hitmonlee as much as I do now, as I mentioned in the uh, previous episode. And I got uh, a Dratini that you can get over the course of the game. And I considered the game corner a fair game for no Pokeballs, so I got a Sandshrew there to use as a, predominantly as an HM Slave, but also a Pokemon that would no Earthquake, because having a powerful ground type move is always helpful. And that brings me to the run that I've done most recently, which is one that I put out for a long time, uh, a Nuzlocke run. There are two core principles to every Nuzlocke run that must be followed for it to be considered a Nuzlocke run. One is catching only the first Pokemon you find in each route. If it runs away, or you run away, or you make it faint by accident, you cannot catch any Pokemon on that route. And that may not be a problem if not for the second core rule of any Nuzlocke run, which is if a Pokemon faints, you can't use it anymore. You have to either put it in a box never to be used again, or release it, whichever is, uh, whichever you prefer. And there are many variations on it. One that I ch elected to use is to nickname each of your Pokemon, so that there's more of a emotional attachment, I suppose, which makes it a great deal more painful when the limb faints, as I now know from experience. Uh, I had a Cyndaquil named Dante, a Ghastly, which I nicknamed uh, Megan, because of the uh, first season episode of Pokemon, The Ghost of Maiden Speak, the voice actress who did Ghastly in that, or rather the Maiden in that game, or that episode. I cannot talk, ever. Uh, the voice actress who did the Maiden was, uh, her name was Megan. I had a uh, Zubat, which I had nicknamed Dr. Acula. Um, I had a Gyarados, which I had called as a Magikarp, and at that point its nickname was Derpfish, but after it evolved I changed its name to Faron, which fans of Skyward Sword will know that name immediately. And if you haven't played Skyward Sword, I highly encourage it. And I had a uh, Golem, a Geodude, initially on that team as well, which I nicknamed Peter, because Peter means rock, and Geodude is a rock. Uh, but at the moment, uh, I no longer have that run going, because I lost a lot of Pokemon uh, in the surprise battle with my rival, where he revealed knowing Shadow Ball, which I had no idea he did. And I kind of suspended the run indefinitely at that point because I was so traumatized by losing so many of my Pokemon to Shadow Ball. I mean, I imagine I could uh, find Pokemon in my box that would uh, cover the lacking areas of my team. But I decided to uh, continue on with Pokemon Black from that point and take a break from Soul Silver for a while. And what did I forget to talk about? Because I had 25 minutes where I planned to split it for the first time and I'm done with everything. Oh, yes, future LPs. I was going to mention those briefly. Um, the next LP after this game will be a Zelda game. I'll say that right now. I plan to LP every Zelda game. And, uh, if you're clever, you probably already know which what the next one is. Or if you've seen some of my older tweets and Facebook postings, you probably know as well. And I'll probably do that one by itself. And if I can prove to myself, mostly, that I can update consistently uh, through that LP, then I'll probably continue to do Legend of Zelda most of the time and have uh, more varied projects alongside that so that it's not just Zelda all the time. But as Zelda is by far my favorite series, uh, it's likely that that would be... It's a series that I want to LP to the best of my ability as many of the games that I can. Um, obviously some of them are difficult, like the DS games, there's no uh, legal way as of present to LP those, and I certainly don't want to use an emulator to do so. But that's all in the future. Uh, once I get through Silphco, I'm certain that I will be able to uh, get through the rest of this game much quicker. Just this episode that I'm commentating right now has been such a nightmare to edit just due to its sheer length. 
and the fact that the commentary was not up to snuff the first time I recorded it. But it's right about here that I'm going to cut it for the first time. Uh, this will be the longest of the three parts, but I'm leaving to heal right now. So it seemed like the best place to cut it. So I will see you in the next part when I have more to talk about.